The story starts with an old woman showing Helga an apartment where a strange insect had gotten in. Helga had memory problems and wrote everything on her wall to remember. She called the helpline using a number written there, and a boy came to her house. When he arrived, he noticed a smelly liquid leaking from Helga's air conditioner. He knocked on Helga's door, and when she opened it, he asked, There's already an emergency van outside. If they came to help, why did you call again? Where are they? Helga replied that she had memory problems and didn't remember where they were. The boy went inside to find the insect. He heard scary noises from the ceiling and realized that whatever was making the noise was big and dangerous. In the next room, he saw blood coming from the ventilation. Shocked, he found the dead bodies of the two people who had come to help Helga. Terrified, he tried to leave, but a giant spider appeared and attacked him before he could react. The spider dragged him into the ventilation. Helga saw all this and got scared, so she went to another room. Because of her memory problems, she forgot everything once she got there. She turned on the TV and started watching it without a care. However, the spider noises scared her again, so she called the helpline for the third time. Then the scene ended. Now let's go back to four days ago to see how this all started. Four days before today, a meteor from space crashed into Helga's apartment. Next door to Helga, her granddaughter Charlotte lived with her mom and stepdad. Charlotte often visited her grandmother by crawling through the ventilation pipe because she kept a lot of her toys at Helga's place. On that particular day, Charlotte went to Helga's apartment to get her toys and saw the meteor. A strange spider was on it, and Charlotte found the spider fascinating. She decided to put the spider in a jar and then went back to her own apartment. Charlotte's stepdad was a comic book writer. Charlotte usually helped him with his comic stories. That day, while he was drawing sketches for his comic, Charlotte suggested giving the character red eyes to make it look more evil, thinking it would make the comic sell better. Through their playful conversation, it was clear that Charlotte's stepdad loved her very much, but Charlotte still couldn't see him as her real dad. Charlotte's mom often went to Helga's apartment to take care of her because Helga's mental health had worsened after being betrayed by Charlotte's real dad. This betrayal hurt Helga so much that she started to forget everything. Despite everything, Helga loved Charlotte dearly. Even though Charlotte's real dad had deceived both her mom and her grandmother, Helga's love for her still never wavered. Now we show Charlotte watching the spider when a bug comes near her. Charlotte kills the bug with her hands. As soon as she does, the spider starts making noise. Charlotte thinks the spider might be hungry, so she feeds it the dead bug. The spider quickly swallows it, and Charlotte is surprised. How could the spider eat such a big bug so fast? Curious, she kills another bug and feeds it to the spider too. She is amazed to see how the spider eats everything and grows bigger very quickly. Meanwhile, Charlotte's stepdad, who is writing his comic story, gets a bit stuck and confused. He goes to Charlotte's room to ask for help and notices the jar with the spider in it. At that moment, Charlotte is in the washroom, so he just watches the spider. When Charlotte comes back, he tells her, I need your help with my story. Charlotte replies, don't worry, I will definitely help you, but I need to sleep now. Her stepdad goes back to his room and they both go to sleep. Later that night, the spider starts moving around noisily, maybe because it's still hungry. What it had eaten wasn't enough. Looking for more food, the spider escapes from the jar. It crawls through the ventilation pipe to another apartment. This apartment belongs to Charlotte's stepdad's mother, who is also Charlotte's second grandmother. The spider attacks her pet parrot. In the morning, Charlotte's grandmother discovered the gruesome scene and screamed loudly. Charlotte's dad rushed over and found his parrot lifeless. It was a horrifying sight. They wondered who could have done such a thing. Charlotte's grandmother suggested it might have been a rat or some other animal. They called emergency services and a rescue officer arrived. He determined that the damage was caused by an insect, likely one with a venomous sting that harmed the parrot. They began spraying for insects throughout the house. When they got to Charlotte's room, she refused to allow them to spray. She explained that she had a pet spider that she cared for and raised. She insisted that she wouldn't let anyone harm it. After the officer left, Charlotte started playing with her spider again. She fed it some bugs and noticed that certain scents, like her mouth fresheners, seemed to scare the spider. Later that night, after everyone had gone to sleep, the spider escaped from its jar again. It crawled through the ventilation pipe into the room of a young lady. When the lady saw the spider, her dog started barking. She moved her dog aside and began looking at a family photo. Suddenly, the spider dropped onto the photo, startling her. It then attacked her face, causing her to harm. Terrified, she looked in the mirror and saw the blood. In a horrifying moment, the spider entered her mouth. It proceeded to consume every organ in her body, ultimately killing her. 
In the morning, Charlotte asked her mom for permission to visit their neighbor, who was an animal researcher. She wanted to get information about her spider. At the neighbor's house, Charlotte showed him the spider and asked for advice. Looking closely, the man told Charlotte that it wasn't a typical spider, it was something else. He explained that spiders don't grow to such a size in such a short time. Concerned, he asked Charlotte if he could study it further. Charlotte agreed, giving him the spider. After researching, the man discovered that it was a highly dangerous spider capable of killing humans. Charlotte returned home where her mom and dad were talking. Suddenly, they heard noises from the ventilation system. They discovered their neighbor's dog trapped inside. Charlotte's dad picked up the dog and tried to return it to their neighbor's apartment. However, when the neighbor didn't respond to the door, Charlotte's dad used the emergency key to enter. Inside, the dog began barking loudly and there were bloodstains visible. Charlotte's dad, alarmed, searched further and found the neighbor's lifeless body. He immediately called the police. The police arrived at the scene and determined that the woman's death was not caused by a human. This news spread fear among the building's residents, as previously only animals had been killed, but now humans were also at risk. No one knew who or what was responsible for these deaths. Charlotte's neighbor called her dad over and warned him about the spider Charlotte had, saying it was highly poisonous. He pleaded with Charlotte's dad to convince her to get rid of it or kill it. Shocked by this revelation, Charlotte's dad asked if the spider could indeed kill a human. When assured that it could, he became concerned. Returning home, he confronted Charlotte, expressing his worry. He asked her if she knew how dangerous the spider was and insisted she couldn't keep it. Charlotte responded angrily, saying he wasn't her father and couldn't dictate her choices. She asserted that she believed the spider was harmless and insisted on keeping it, firmly declaring it was her decision. The scene transitions to the dark of night. The spider, now housed in the neighbor's residence by Charlotte, systematically killing every animal and bird in the house, it eventually moves through the ventilation system, unseen and lethal. Meanwhile, Charlotte returns home with the dog of her neighbor, unaware of the impending danger lurking within her own home. The dog, sensing the presence of the spider in the ventilation shaft, begins barking loudly, a desperate warning that goes unheeded in the chaos of the moment. Switching scenes again, we find ourselves at Charlotte's second grandmother's house. Distressed and frantic, she searches every corner for her beloved missing cat. Her anxiety peaks when she hears faint meows emanating from the ventilation. Rushing to rescue her trapped pet, she is suddenly ambushed by the spider, its venomous strike incapacitating her and leaving her helpless and alone. Back at Charlotte's house, tension escalates as her parents engage in a heated argument, their voices echoing through the walls. Disheartened and disturbed by their fight, Charlotte takes refuge in her room with her younger brother, attempting to shield him from the emotional turmoil by drowning out the sounds with headphones. Unbeknownst to them, the predatory spider silently advances through the intricate network of vents. In a terrifying moment of aggression, it launches an attack on Charlotte's parents, whose voices suddenly fall silent. Growing increasingly concerned by the ominous quiet that follows, Charlotte cautiously ventures outside her room. Instead of finding her parents, she is met with a grisly scene of bloodstains and chaos, evidence of the spider's deadly presence and its potential threat to her family's lives. Realizing the urgency of the situation, Charlotte resolves that she alone must confront and defeat the menacing spider to save her loved ones from further harm. Charlotte already knew that the spider was afraid of mouth freshener tablets. Fearing for her family's safety, she decided to use this knowledge to kill the spider. Before she could act, however, the spider snatched her little brother right before her eyes. Determined to save her family, Charlotte mixed a large number of mouth freshener tablets with water and loaded them into a water gun. Knowing the spider had been active in the ventilation system, she bravely entered it. When Charlotte's dad regained consciousness, he found himself ensnared in a bizarre web. Before him, trapped in the same web, were his mother, son, and wife. Desperately, he tried to free his mother, but the web gave way and she fell. Through the ventilation, Charlotte reached Helga's house, where she discovered her second grandmother's lifeless body. Still unable to locate her parents, she questioned Helga about what had happened. Helga, afflicted by forgetfulness, couldn't recall anything. As Charlotte spoke with Helga, she noticed the scent of mouth freshener on her clothes. Realizing this might be why the spider hadn't harmed Helga, Charlotte instructed her to stay put and call for help. Just then, she heard her stepdad's voice coming from the elevator, giving her hope that he might still be alive. Charlotte swiftly moved towards the elevator and found her dad ensnared in the spider's web. 
With mouth freshener in hand, she quickly sprayed it on her dad, causing the webs to break apart. She explained that the mouth freshener water could kill the spider and free its victims. Determined to rescue everyone else, they set out. Meanwhile, the scene shifts to the rescue officer returning to the building to check on Helga, just as we saw at the beginning. Upon entering, he noticed green liquid leaking from the air conditioner. As he stepped further into Helga's house, the spider attacked him viciously. Charlotte and her dad rushed to the scene, but they too were attacked and injured by the spider. Despite their injuries, they tried to save the rescue officer, but the spider reappeared. Thinking quickly, Charlotte's dad used the mouth freshener water to scare the spider away temporarily. The rescue officer informed them he had a nail gun, suggesting it could be used to kill the spider. When the spider returned, they faced it head on. With a well-aimed shot from the nail gun, they saw blue blood flow from the spider. In the midst of the intense battle, a stray shot hit the fire alarm, triggering all the building's water sprinklers. Water cascaded down, washing away the mouth freshener protection they had applied. With their defense weakened, the spider seized the opportunity, attacking and abducting the rescue officer. The situation became dire as the spider's threat intensified. Now Charlotte and her dad faced a race against time to save themselves and their remaining loved ones from the relentless menace of the spider. To rescue the rest of their family, Charlotte and her dad pressed forward and discovered that Charlotte's mom and brother had been ensnared by the spider and placed inside the garbage chute. Determined to save them, they entered the tunnel. Charlotte's dad attempted to activate the chute remotely, hoping to eject the spider and their trapped family members out of the building like garbage. Unfortunately, the remote failed to work. Undeterred, he tried to manually connect wires to the chute, but he was electrocuted severely and collapsed, appearing lifeless. Before Charlotte could react, the spider approached them menacingly. Actively thinking, Charlotte quickly pressed the tunnel's button. This time, the chute's door responded, swiftly closing just as the spider reached it, trapping and ultimately crushing the spider. Relieved that their ordeal with the spider was finally over, they emerged from the tunnel. They rushed to Charlotte's dad and discovered he was unconscious but alive. They managed to revive him, and there was a joyous reunion as they embraced. In a heartfelt moment, Charlotte addressed him as her dad for the first First time, surprising him. Overwhelmed with emotion, they all hugged, believing their troubles were behind them and looking forward to a brighter future. However, the story took a chilling turn. It is revealed that there are numerous spider eggs inside, hinting that the danger was far from over. The uncertain future left them apprehensive and unsettled. With this ominous and mysterious conclusion, the story came to an end. Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> this guy was like, oh, free dinner. And I was like, nah, bro, my dinner has just arrived. This spring one's gonna be like, I think I have like, oh shoot. Go ahead and take that. Free meal for me. <laughs> it's the free meal for me. All right, go ahead and take this guy as well. Take you on like a donkey count. Hello, Gavna. Pip pip cheerio. All right, I'll go ahead and take that. And just when you thought, you're too late. I've already eaten him. <laughs> Excuse me. Delicioso. Anyways, this is the guy that is my arch nemesis, remember? From earlier? Yeah. He's back for more. I told you he'd be back. I told you he'd be back. You remember me from earlier, by the way? <laughs> You'll never catch me alive, couples. Uh, I'm too hyper. I just had breakfast. Sorry. All right. Hmm. How about I let him come to me? Yes, yes. If you want revenge, you come this way, sir. Oh, look at you. Look at you, squishy. He's so tiny. He's like a mini version of my arch nemesis. Ooh. Yeah. That sucks. I want a little piece of that. Let me get some of that action. Oh, yep. Give me that. Go ahead and take that. Oh, look. Little mini him. This is just like that movie where there's like a mini him version where the, the guy with the pinky that goes on the mouth, like at the corner of the mouth. Yeah. It's a mini me version of my arch nemesis. Ooh, ooh, do the dance. I'm a little worm. I'm a little. Yeah, I'm a little worm. I'm a little. I'm a little worm. I'm a little. I'm a little worm. I'm a little. Just because I'm little don't mean I'm weak. I'm a little worm, but I don't do weak. Yeah. That don't mean weak. I'm a little worm. I'm a little. Yeah. I can also squeeze two small spaces, if you know what I mean.